across all levels of the HIV. And policy framing on areas concerning their health and well being. Aisha currently holds the advisor youth engagement position at the Sec Secretariat of the Joint United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS, UN AIDS. So I'll, invite, I'll be inviting them for the opening remarks and welcome speech to this very important event. Thank you. Have the floor, please. You see, I would you like to start? Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, IFMSA and IPFS for having me uh, speaking at this event. Um, I'm very honored for this invitation and for um, the work uh, we have done together collaboratively in the past years. Um, so I would start saying that perhaps, uh, you know, young people have always been at the forefront of the HIV response. But within this group, medical students have a long history of addressing HIV and also been a driving force for change in the health uh, sector. So the HIV response really needs uh, your action to be able to achieve the, the bold targets uh, of ending um, AIDS uh, as a public health uh, threat. Um, we have witnessed uh, the devastating effects of uh, HIV, um, the you know really negative effects that have on people's health and, and lives. Um, and despite all the progress in the past years um, with the reduction of, of new infections globally, uh, we still um, have a high and significant number of new infections. Um, way above the targets that we have set uh, for ending AIDS. So we, we are um, actually off track for achieving the targets uh, of the SDGs uh, under, um, uh, under uh, the goal three on, on health. Um, and, but beyond the devastating effects among community in many countries also, um, HIV related stigma and discrimination remains uh, rampant. Um, according to UNH's most recent data in um, 19 countries with available data, 25% uh, of people living with HIV re report experience, uh, report experiencing stigma and discrimination in, in healthcare settings. Um, and we know that experiencing these high levels of um, HIV-related related stigma and discrimination deter people sleeping with HIV from enrolling in treatment and seeking care. So to address the widespread of HIV-related stigma and discrimination experienced by people living with HIV in healthcare settings and its effects in, on reaching the global HIV prevention and treatment targets, uh, UNAIDS formed the Global Prevention Coalition for addressing um, all forms of HIV-related stigma and discrimination in 2017. Uh, this partnership aims to uh, fulfill the commitment, uh, build meaningful partnerships uh, to address stigma and discrimination, and um, together build um, an, an accountability uh, framework and mechanisms. Um, as of May 2023, uh, there are 10 UN agencies collaborating in, the, in this global partnership, 24 CSOs, including youth um, networks, and 35 countries that are committed uh, to the global partnership in, in achieving its targets. Uh, with the Health uh, Care Students Declaration of Commitments, we see a clear opportunity to strengthen the linkages between the work of the healthcare students and the work of the Global uh, Prevention Coalition and the, and, the, and the Global Partnership to end stigma and discrimination. Um, and also to ensure that these contributions from the healthcare students fit into uh, the global targets for ending AIDS. Um, so to continue the path uh, to end AIDS, uh, the Global AIDS uh, report, the most recent one, uh, highlights the need to engage affected communities and strengthen the linkages between communities and the health uh, systems to have integrated people-centered and human rights-based approaches at the heart of the HIV response. 
So the engagement of uh, medical and pharmaceutical students is critical to preventing um, new HIV infections, reducing stigma and discrimination, um, and overall ending AIDS. Um, so you, you, this healthcare students must have a place uh, at the table, uh, must be engaged in collaboration, um, and have a place uh, at the uh, at all levels of the response, particularly also decision making spaces. Um, with the global partnership, um, highlighting the importance of collaboration with uh, medical students to reduce stigma and discrimination, um, and uh, the recent data that, that we um, have available, um, we know that young people in the public health sphere are uh, positioned, are really well positioned to help um, uh, to help the, the HIV respond and also leverage on healthcare students' knowledge, experiences, and, and closeness to communities. Um, so they are really, you know, in a good position to educate uh, the public about HIV influence communities, health uh, seeking behaviors, and advocates to reduce stigma and discrimination in health uh, care settings, um, among others, um, other positive outcomes. So uh, with this strength and commitment uh, and grassroots networks of the International Federation of Medical Students and the International Pharmaceutical Students Federation, um, their leadership role in the PAC and their engagement in the global AIDS response architecture, the global HIV movement is stronger each day. So thank you for your valuable contribution um, to the uh, HIV, global HIV youth movement. Um, the launch of this um, uh, declaration of commitment on HIV and AIDS is an invitation for young people to collaborate, take space, and unite in collaborative efforts to end the HIV epidemics. Thank you again for having me. And um, yes, best uh, wishes for the rest of the event. Thank, Thank you. you, Alicia. Thank you very much. So if I'm going to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Um, I would like to start maybe a little bit with the personal story because uh, you haven't mentioned in the introduction, but actually I used to be, um, I have a very close links and very close feelings to IFMSA because I was actually one of the co-founders of the IFMSA Latvia. Now it's called Latvian uh, LAMSA or Latvian Association of Medical Students Association back to uh, 23 years ago. And I also used to be a national officer for reproductive health and AIDS for four years between 2001 and I think 2004 approximately. So I attended four GAs and uh, we did a lot of uh, activities, including um, World AIDS Day activities, uh, um, organizing different seminars for medical students, but also for wider community, um, engaging with the sexuality education in the, in, the, in the high schools. So I think there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of um, memories. And then for 10 years, I moved a little bit away to general medicine and uh, um, emergency medicine, but then gradually uh, the public health and experience in IFMSA brought me back to, to pub public health. And, uh, and I ended up with the global uh, program for HIV, hepatitis and STI. So, I think it's uh, it's very important to understand that the the connections and the um, the experience you get while you are part of the FMSA they they can uh, influence your whole life. Uh, speaking about the HIV and AIDS, I think uh, um, now we can say that we have all the tools uh, to end AIDS. So we have the R IRT. Uh, ART uh, with just one pill or in the future uh, there is also already an injectable ART so actually um, uh, HIV are, uh, is not is not a, a, a deadly disease anymore and it's becoming just one of the uh, other chronic diseases we also have uh, very effective prevention tools like uh, prep we can we, we've seen in many countries that uh, when they scale up the prep programs there is a substantial decrease in, in new infections. So the number of countries and number of cities that 
have eventually eliminated the HIV transmission. So lots of things have changed since I was the NORA uh, 20 years ago. And also now we, uh, WHO has endorsed the U equals U message. So meaning that when people has, um, uh, when somebody living with HIV has suppressed viral load, uh, not even undetectable, even suppressed before 1000, that the, the basically this person cannot transmit uh, HIV to their par partners. And I think this message is a very powerful tool to, um, to address stigma and discrimination. And uh, as, as, as Alicia mentioned, uh, that uh, stigma and discrimination is one of the biggest challenges in HIV response. And I would say that HIV is not just a, a pandemic of infection or infectious disease, but also a pandemic of uh, fear, uh, uh, ignorance, and stigma and discrimination towards the most vulnerable groups. So uh, that's why it's so important now to focus on, on, on addressing stigma and discrimination, including in healthcare sector. And I think that uh, medical students are those, uh, I mean, medical students how, who are working on HIV, they can uh, help their peers who may be not so much interested in HIV to, uh, to, to fill this gap and to, to raise the awareness because the future, future doctors are those who are going to, to change the, the uh, who, are going, who, who are going to change um, this situation. So I think it's really uh, timely that the IFMSA and also IPSF are coming with this declaration and on, on kind of reinforcing the commitments. And we are very happy um, to be invited into uh, this uh, event. And we are looking forward for closer collaboration with, um, with IFMSA and with IPSF and also with UNAIDS. Um, thank you very much once again, and let's have a very interesting meeting today. Over. Thank you very much, Anton and Alicia. I really enjoyed your very short but captivating speech. And welcome, I would love to say welcome home to the being a member of IFMSA before. So welcome home. And on this note, I would like I would like to thank both of you for that very welcome, welcome speech. And we cannot agree that the marathon to eliminate HIV and AIDS has never been an easy one. And the role we as students play has always been some of, some of the very core of this movement. The International Federation of Medical Science Association and International for School Science Federation have been both significant contributors, leading the way for millions of healthcare students around the world, doing what they can do and advocating for what they believe in. Now, we are proud to launch the Healthcare Student Declaration of Commitment on HIV and AIDS. On this note, I'll be welcoming the International Physician of Mass Students Federation, Child Person for Public Health, Audrey and Claudia Sismos, who is a medical intern from Poland, serving as the licensing officer for sexual and reproductive health and rights issues, including HIV and AIDS. Audrey is a pharmacist based in the US and she advocates for the young healthcare professionals and, put, and to put youth on the global stage. She's currently serving as the chairperson of public health of the International Pharmaceutical Science Federation and a part of the newly established WHO Youth Council, which advocates for public health issues such as antimicrobial resistance and climate change. Additionally, Audrey has volunteered as, at an HIV clinic during her time as a student pharmacist to provide free HIV testing to students. She has first cement the place of youth in the global health space. Further, the other hand, is a medical intern from Poland and serving as the licensing officer for sexual and reproductive health and rights issues, including HIV and AIDS, at the International Petition for Medical Student Association, an organization that represents 1.5 million medical students from across 130 countries. She has worked in the field of SRHR for eight years with special interest in gender equality, gender asexuality, sexuality, diversity, and sexual health, implementing intersectional approaches such as effects of climate changes on HRHR, access to services by vulnerable populations or health literacy in the context of sexual and reproductive health. She's also experienced in advocacy for adolescent health and meaningful youth engagement. On a similar level, Claudia has, been, has worked on advocating for access to safe abortion, family planning, and comprehensive sexual education, HIV AIDS prevention, and eliminating discrimination against the LGBTQI community through policy papers, grassroots campaigns, and workforce education. So Audrey and Claudia, you have the floor now. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, I just wanted to share that uh, there's also a live stream on uh, FMS YouTube channel. So if you want to share that, uh, feel free to, to share with your friends and networks or also on your social media uh, channels. Um, so yes, um, if oh, thank you Hazel, also for sharing the link. Um, so I will be sharing the presentation that we prepared for you. Um, just give me a second. Um, and then Audrey and I will guide you through the declaration. So this is something we've been working uh, together um, since a couple of, of weeks. And uh, this is bringing us to, to share how medical students and pharmacy students can uh, can contribute to um, addressing HIV and uh, through our specifics and how we actually uh, work together uh, on the local, national and international levels. Um, so um, here are a couple of calls to actions, but firstly, we will share with you the text of the declaration itself. I, uh, I prepared this QR code, so if there is anyone that can scan it, feel free to do so. But uh, Hazel, if you could also share the link um, in the chat, that would be great. I will give a couple of seconds for the text itself. Um, yeah. So the declaration itself, it's composed first of the background of our uh, of our um, organizations. It explains how we actually work and what is our experience in, in working uh, in, in HIV and AIDS. Um, and also our past commitments, uh, such as being the member of the pact, um, among other, other contributions we've done throughout the years. Um, this declaration itself is a reaffirmation of the actions we do, we've done in 2017, which is um, a similar case in which we also um, also shared um, our commitments back then. And this is just adapting to the new realities of 2023. Um, so without further ado, Audrey and I will guide you a little bit um, on how we plan to implement the specific calls um, well, the specific commitments we put in the declaration itself. So, Audrey, on to you. Yep. So, um, moving forward, we're just going to share a lot of objectives and, and uh, just a little bit of plans. So, the top part, you can see the objectives of what we are trying to achieve. And in the green part, you can see what exactly we're trying to do to reach the goal. So, the first one that we have is to build capacities of our members on the medical and social cultural aspects concerning HIV, including stigma, discrimination, key populations, and prevention. As we all know, that capacity building is very important. So through doing this, uh, both of us are going to have workshop for our members. And um, there are specific work, different workshops that we'll be doing. So that's how we're going to achieve this goal. Right. Uh, so the other commitment that we planned is to advocate for designing and implementing comprehensive medical education curricula that equips students with the required knowledge and skills to provide high quality, people centered, gender, gender transformative and discrimination free health services to people living with HIV and most vulnerable to HIV. So we agreed that by 2024, we will be doing uh, a survey. Um, we'll publish the survey results on HIV related contents incorporation within, within medical curriculum. Um, and this is something that IFMSA already uh, surveyed this year, but we also need some time to analyze the data. Then um, by 2025, we will develop all together, uh, both of our organizations, a policy brief on education advocacy on HIV that can be used by our member organizations. Um, and then by 2026, uh, we will develop basic competencies on HIV-related stigma and discrimination in medical curriculum. And also something that we plan to do, um, do every year, uh, which is conducting joint sessions together with the Standing Committees on Medical Education and the Standing Committee on Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights. All right. 
And the next one we have, I'll continue with efficacy work, is that we want to advocate for inclusion of HIV intervention packages with, within universal health coverage, which is definitely a very hot topic, and also implementing harm reduction programs and holistic approach to people living with HIV and key populations. And uh, including this is going to be interlinked with a lot of different topics here as well, including NCDs, mental health, SRHR. So through this, since there are like a lot of topics that will be involved, uh, a plan is to conduct a joint campaign uh, on HIV services within UHC package, which we know that there are a lot of uh, UHC day and World AIDS day coming up, as well as we will have a media brief on the importance of this holistic approach to HIV. So there will uh, definitely look forward to a lot of campaigns around this area. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so the next one is to capacitate and um, encourage our members to advocate on the national level for abolishing discriminatory and criminalizing laws um, against people living with HIV and key populations, increasing investment in HIV response, um, establishing affordable and accessible prevention, treatment and harm reduction interventions, designing strategies to reduce health inequalities and addressing the needs of key populations. Um, it is a very broad goal, but in that one, we plan to conduct two annual activities, which is uh, contributing to the campaign on World AIDS Day and conduct a SRHR, SRHR advocacy workshop at least, at least once a year. Then uh, by 2024, we also plan to promote um, Uproot Initiative for National Member Organizations, which is an initiative in which youth um, is holding governments accountable for the for the policy making uh, and evaluates the existing policies within the country. All right, so we can move forward. And the next one, um, up until it's, we also want to support and encourage our members to conduct activities on top of what we are doing already on a global level. Uh, so we want to support them um, to have different initiatives to also end a stigma so we can do this together. And uh, with this, we want to specifically talk about different forms of discrimination with uh, people with HIV at all levels. And with this, uh, one thing is that we're going to develop a toolkit. So I know that um, for FMSA, uh, the goal is to develop a toolkit on how national member organizations can work on zero discrimination. And uh, for IPSF, we already had a toolkit in the past, so we want to reevaluate the previous toolkit and assess the effectiveness and innovative ways to have better activities uh, using this toolkit. Right. So the next goal is to foster the environment of respectful, sensitive and prejudice free communication with and about uh, people living with HIV and key populations by educating members on inclusive language, emotional responsibility and non judgmental thinking, as well as implementing accountability measures. So since this goal is um, centered around the language, we wanted to create um, informative videos that are easily digestible and that explain inclusive language um, used a, around HIV, especially that is like the, with the negative connotations such as combat and the um, and like battle based language basically, but also positive to foster positive attitudes uh, in relations to people living with HIV. So that will be the goal that we plan to do to fulfill this year um, to create some sort of awareness um, raising on language. All right, we can go forward. Yep. And then the next one on the different activities that we have mentioned. Uh, the next one is actually one to develop research skills of our members so they can also participate in research related to HIV prevention, vaccine treatment, and all their research related research. So to do that, we, we want to collaborate with different portfolios so we can actually have different workshop and also different competition campaigns and to prepare all of our members to do like um, related HIV or SRHR research.
The next one is to promote meaningful engagement of communities, especially young people, in designing, implementing, and evaluating HIV-related interventions and decision-making. Um, so in that one, we will um, evaluate the previous policy papers on HIV and AIDS and promote actions for meaningful youth engagement in the communities. Um, the second goal would be to develop a toolkit on how uh, our members can work on zero discrimination on the national level, uh, also with HIV-oriented uh, organizations, and uh, create community outreaches and advocate as a young person. And the last one, um, so here you can see two different policy papers. Is that because <laughs> both of us uh, call it a little bit differently and we have different timeline for doing so. So the, the last one is, is for IFMSA. We evaluate the policies every three years. And the first, uh, the first goal is in regards to IPSF policy papers. Um, so yeah, that will be that goal. And the last one goes to Audrey. The next one. Yeah, and I know we, I don't know, we have mentioned a lot of different workshops, different initiatives and um, different things that we're going to do. Of course, it's very important at this point to also collect data on different levels, on local, national, regional, as well as international levels to really collect all of those interventions and to measure the impact. Uh, so for this, we want to, for us, we want to recollect and update the data on for all those and then after we recollect the data, we will evalu evaluate um, the current framework and then to see what we can do more moving forward. All right. So the next uh, next objective is to strengthen collaboration with community and youth led organizations working on HIV and with people living with HIV to maximize the efforts to end AIDS by 2030, repeal discriminatory laws and policies and eradicate stigma and multiple and intersecting intersecting forms of discrimination. So in that one, since uh, we mentioned our position in the steering committee of the pact, we want to maintain that position um, to also foster the collaboration with youth-led organizations and to strengthen the meaningful youth engagement in, um, in HIV action. Um, and then the, the next one is um, once again, the goal we already mentioned, which is the toolkit on how you can advocate as a young person. So that was that is the goal that is kind of overarching with different objectives, right? And the last one that we're willing to do is that we want to go beyond what we have right now. So we want to expand the multi-sectoral and multi-professional approach to also have other join our actions. And um, through this, we're going to be doing initiatives together and um, to have different stakeholders involved. And together, we can. Um, and the stigma. So to do that, we will, we'll, again, it's more like a overarching goal as well, is, to, is that we want to have a joint campaign on our AIDS day and UHC day and to have webinar togethers and talk about how to end stigma and then talk about the HIV topic from different perspectives. I guess we will stop for a second and just to share with you the implementation plan. So that will still be the mic of uh, Audrey. Let me just um, open the doc. Yep. So like as we continue to identify the goals that we have. Uh, we created this Excel sheet to kind of keep track of our plans. So here you can see that um, on the left side, there are all of the objectives. And then we kind of think about like, what is the timeline and what we can do together or like what we will do for each of the organizations. And so you can see that on the right side, the green box, when it's built, it means that that's the year that we're trying to target and to get it done. So of course, that means that we'll also need a lot of you guys to be involved because as you can tell, like a lot of our goals really involve like you guys, which will be like doing all the initiatives or like to be a part of our initiative. So it's very important that SB kind of move forward and then to release different opportunities or like um, to advocate for this that you guys join us.
All right, so that's all from us. So if you have any questions to, to the declaration and how we plan to achieve our goals, please free to share. And in, in that case, um, you can also type them in the uh, in the question bar. Um, but if they appear also at the end, you can um, you can raise them at the end, and maybe in the meantime, um, all right. I we see the question from uh, in the chat about the World Sexual Health Day on September four, and if IFMSA and IPSF have any plans. <laughs> um, are you gonna go first, or should I? <laughs> Yeah, sure. I can. So we're actually surprisingly two days to launch. We're actually doing like a youth sexual health day on like a HIV topic and how we're going to end HIV and AIDS tomorrow. So we're going to have a web around tomorrow. So I can share a link with everyone if you want to join tomorrow. Thank you so much. Well, when it comes to IFMSA, we are very closely spaced to that webinar. Um, and then uh, and the date itself and it's actually very uh hectic period for fmsa because we are just changing our uh our terms so september is very focused on handover periods so sadly we are not going to celebrate um in in a big way um so yeah that, that maybe there will be some activities on on the national level on the regional level but uh, on the international one we do not plan so um all right so that's from me and i do not see any other questions in any of the spaces uh so i guess we can pass to gdev um and we can share further the presentation Is it me or it's the connection breaking? I think it is breaking. I think we lost Dida for a sec. So let's wait maybe a couple of seconds. Yeah, we lost um Gida from the call so let's see if they join back okay they are joining back all right Gida are you back with us the call is still um the mic is still connecting um so now we will move forward to the national activities um and i will just wait for Gida to introduce that part to you but we will have a couple of presentations from our members from ipsf and from ifmsa um doing so um so you will also see how how we work on on the different levels of our work, especially on the national and local um, levels. All right. Oh. It shows me that Dida is still connecting with the mic. <laughs> Oh, you're still breaking. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So maybe we can start with the first activity in the meantime, and then Jita can summarize um, everything at the end. 
So we will move uh, with the first presentation, which is from Nigeria. And now I would like to invite uh, Rakia to present the activity. So you have five minutes. <laughs> Hi, Claudia. Hi, everyone. Um, can the slides be shared, please? Or do I have to do it on my end? It's, it's shared, right? It's already okay. display. Okay, yes, yes, I can see it now. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rakia Mohamed, and I am from the Nigeria Medical Students Association in Nigeria. And I'll be presenting very briefly um, a project we had last year on HIV response. The name of the project is um, HIV Awareness and Self-Testing Campaign. And the score of focus area was HIV and other the project was carried out um, on 21st to 24th of February in 2022. And I am one of the activity coordinators. As at the time, I was serving as a national program coordinator for NIMSA SCORA. And um, this project was done alongside the SCORA director, Ibrahim Mohamed Bellu. And on this project, we had one external partner and that was the DKT International Nigeria. It's an NGO that is focused on um, measures aimed towards HIV response and also aimed towards prevention of other STIs. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, the reason we went into partnership with DKT International Nigeria for this project is because um, there's a HIV pandemic in Nigeria and it has not been well curtailed. It has an extensive regional variation in prevalence and mainly it's due to poverty, lack of accessibility to health facilities, as well as misinformation among the population. So our project was aimed at um, addressing some of these factors that were involved in the increased number of HIV cases we see in Nigeria. So that was basically our problem statement. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, the target group for the project was um, basically four groups, four major group of people, the general population, medical students, because we're trying to impact more, more accurate knowledge about HIV and AIDS. And um, the best instruments for dissemination of such information are medical students. We educate them and then they go on to educate other people. Then we also focused on youth and women because there could be vertical transmission of HIV from women and also youth who are engaged in some risky behaviors can are at risk of getting HIV. Then the last group of people is people at risk of getting HIV and other STIs, which um, includes people who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, adolescents and children, transgender individuals, and also sex workers. So these are the four broad categories we had um, as our target groups. Next slide, please. So the objectives of our project was basically um, divided into two broad spectrums. One is enlightenment and two is to ensure that um, people get the HIV self-test kits and know their HIV status. So um, the collaboration with DKT Nigeria was on our end, we provide the manpower for the enlightenment and they, were, they provided us with oral quick HIV self-test kits, over 50,000 of the self-test kits that we distributed across um, over 27 states in Nigeria. So our first objective for the project was to ensure effective distribution of over 50,000 self-test kits to students across tertiary institutions in Nigeria within the five day period of our project to encourage people living with HIV to continue managing the condition and also join support groups around them and also to discourage the stigmatization and discrimination of people living with HIV. And lastly, to effectively facilitate access to healthcare providers. So um, all these objectives were rooted in the methodology of our project. For the first objective, we were able to achieve this because we had a um, liaisons officer in a lot of other Medical Students Association in Nigeria, and we're able to distribute the kits and also have the enlightenment sessions. Next slide, please. 
So um, these were our success indicators. Um, we were able to achieve all of them because we had a very good evaluation um, plan in place. And um, it's really my honor to see we were able to distribute over 50,000 self-test kits in Nigeria within five days. And we ensured that people use them and we're also able to enlighten more than 50,000 people about HIV and other STIs. Um, next slide. So basically, this was the methodology we used. We had um, a pre-webinar, a lot of publicity before the project. Then we had sensitization and then a synchronized outreach within the five days all to, well, um, nationwide in Nigeria. Then we had our local officers submit reports about the project. Then we did the evaluation for the project. Next slide. Okay, so these were the evaluation methods we used. Before the projects, we had a pre-evaluation questionnaire that had um, basic bio data about the participants, if they knew about their HIV status, if they, if they regularly check their HIV status, or if they have support groups around them. So we just wanted to know what their status was before we engage them in the enlightenment and also um, give them the kits to use. Then after that, we had a post-evaluation questionnaire for them also. They filled it and were able to compare the responses and were able to see that there was a significant increase in, in knowledge about HIV and AIDS within all the communities we went to have our outreach. Next slide. Okay, so um, this is the flyer we used. Um, for the project, uh, we had it for a few days. Here, this was the self-test kits being used. Um, next, these are some of our students within marketplaces. And here was a part of the rally we had. Yes, these are our students and yeah. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much. Um... Erakia, I think we have Dida back, right? Uh, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. I oh, am. super. We can hear you now. Great. So we can take over. <laughs> now you're muted. Okay. Sorry about that. So that was the presentation from NIMSA on the examples of body concentration of healthcare sent to HIV response. Should, so are we continuing with the representatives representative from these senior organizations or are we just going back to the interaction with the public? So I'm not sure about that. Yes, we do have Anais. Uh, you can go. Okay. Hi. Uh, so I'm Anaïs, I'm a coordinator for CALWA project this year. So uh, we are overviewed by the SWIMSA, which is a IFMSA in Switzerland. We focus about HIV and actually the timeline for the project is a bit complicated because the project actually started in 2010 and I'm only coordinator for one year. Uh, and we partner with uh, local dispensaries in Tanzania, and I will explain the rest later. You can uh, go on to the next slide, please. So this is basically um, the two children, the youngest children that we have in the project. Uh, they're uh, six months old, so they're really cute, and uh, they're the face of the project for this year. Uh, you can move on to the next slide, please. So as you may all know, Tanzania is the country circled in red in this picture. You can go on to the next slide. And the project is, uh, is being launched in the Mwanza region, which is circled in white. Uh, it's in the north of Tanz Tanzania. And our target groups, like the next slide says, is uh, adolescents and children. You can move on to the next slide. For the problem statement, so as you can see, 5% of the Tanzanian population is living with HIV and the Mwanza region is one of the most affected. And um, our local team says that the transmission is mostly occurring from mother to child. You can go on to the next slide, please. 
Um, actually, Tanzania uh, reacted to the epidemic and they started a national campaign in the early 2000s. And they thought that by making the pills free of charge, then they were um, like erasing all the obstacles uh, for the people to go and seek treatment, but it didn't really work because there were further obstacles you can click two times because there's, yeah, you can, yeah. So the first problem is that uh, there is a huge distance from the uh, villages to the hospital and transportation is very expensive. People have to uh, let go of a day of work. Uh, there is also a lot of discrimination which prevents people from seeking treatment and the lack of information about the disease itself or the treatment also prevents people uh, from going to the hospital. And for the children, you can click, please. There is also a problem because there is a lack of pediatrician uh, in the Monza region. You can click again, please. So what we do is organizing activity days. We call them like that. It's a day where the members of the project can go and have a medical checkup. They can have the, the, their treatment, which is paid by the government. They receive food and uh, food supplements in order to motivate the parents to go to the hospitals. We also provide transport fees and uh, the kids have a safe space to play with other people which are living with HIV. And we also provide health education, which is very important for us in order to stop the transmission of the virus. Our purpose is to increase attendance to clinic and adherence to treatment. Now we have about 435 uh, children. Uh, they go to clinic one time per month. And we have three partner dispensaries uh, since this very month. So we're very proud of this evolution. You can go on to the next slide, please. Our objective is to reach 100% adherence and attendance. We want to dispense complete uh, health education. We wrote a book in order to uh, reach this objective. And in the long term, we aim to decrease the transmission, the stigmatization, and um, to ameliorate the clinical stage of the treatment you can go, uh, of the children, sorry, you can pass on to the next slide, please. For the methodology, we organize the activity days. It's actually 100% done by our uh, partners in Tanzania. They do the hard work. In Switzerland, we only do the fundraising. We organize meetings one time a week. And we also do a little bit of prevention here in Switzerland in the classrooms with children with the book that we or originally we wrote it in French and then translated it in Swahili with our partners in Tanzania. And we go there to monitor uh, what happens there. You can go on to the next slide, please. So we evaluate it with questionnaires and also with Excels about uh, the health condition of the children can go on to the next slide, please. And this year, like I said, we wrote books. So one for the little children, it's a story, the one with the giraffe, and uh, one information book that you can see bottom left for the teenagers. You can change slide, please. And we distribute also toothbrush and uh, menstrual panties in order to help with uh, hygiene as much as we can. You can go on to the next slide, please. And this is evolutions for this year. So we opened a new center, we distributed the books. Uh, you can go on to the next slide, please. And we, uh, we brought computers because communication is sometimes a bit difficult. We raised the budget in one center in order to equalize between the centers. And we want to make the project durable. So we are discussing the construction of a morgue, which could uh, bring money in Tanzania for the project and Sherati Center could become independent thanks to that. You can move on to the slide, which is basically our uh, social media. And this is it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Renato Nakahara and I'm the I'm from Brazil. And I'm the National Officer on Sexual and Reproductive Health, and including HIV and AIDS, NORA of IFMSA Brazil. 
It's with great pleasure that I introduce the activity Testar a Saber, uh, Testing is Knowing. Uh, so the NMO is FMSA Brazil. This core focus area is HIV and other S uh, S I uh, ISTs. The timeline is the 2nd to 29th of November 20, uh, 2022. And the external partner was the health department of the government of the state of Sao Paulo. And the activity Oh, and the activity coordinators is Victoria Pessa and Isabella Bar uh, Barizzati and Ana Lara Nascimento, who will present this wonderful activity to you. Thank you. Just a second. So, hi everyone. I'm Ana Laura I'm from F IFMSA Brazil, and I'm one of the coordinators of Testar e Saber, which means testing is knowing. So, the problem statement is that according to the Ministry of Health, the number of carriers of acquired syphilis increased in 2019, mainly in the range of ages ranges for 20 to 39, which is the age of most college students in Barretos. On the other hand, cases registered via hepatitis dropped sharply from 2010 onwards. However, this drop is attributed to the inefficient testing and underreporting of cases. Furthermore, the Ministry of Health reveals that most concentration of HIV cases is among young people aged 25 to 39, and that year after year, the numbers of carriers grow. You can pass the slide, please. The target groups were medical students. Um, just a minute. Sorry. I, I'm not seeing, okay. So although the students have extensive access to information related to the transmission of STIs within and outside the city of Barretos, they do not do the prevention like they, they could. So they don't have adequate prevention habits, rarely making use of condoms, whether female or male. And in Barretos, as a university city, the tests at the health centers are carried out by students and professors themselves, and this keeps them away from these places. You can, okay. The objectives were to reduce the incidence of STI and HIV cases and raise awareness among students at the University of Health Science in Barretos, and to sensitize the students about STIs and HIV, prevent possible infection, assist in reducing stigma and discrimination against people with STIs and HIV, and conduct voluntary testing for students and offer treatment and welcome to any positive cases. The success indicators were that after the testing, we expected that at least 70% of the par participating students report recognizing the risks of STIs. At least 80% of the participants will be able to correctly sit at least one way to prevent a possible STI and a 20% increase in correct answers in the post-activity form. Next slide, please. So the methodology was that with the support of an infectious disease doctor and a nurse, we organized moments of conversation and clarification regarding reproductive health and sexual education. We offered free female and male condoms, as well as lubricants in all college bathrooms. So next slide, please. Regarding the tests, we invited qualified nurses who had no contact with the college students to conduct the tests to avoid any embarrassment by their part. We opened registration via Google Forms and by appointment to ensure a better organization. And on the day of the tests, we used five classrooms in college to ensure separate spaces for each person without recording their names. And after the testing, Individuals received a kit with condoms, lubrificants, and informational brochures about this topic. You can pass, please. And the evaluation was that uh, regarding the impact research, a form was made with simple questions related to forms of contagion, protection, and epidemiological information on STX. The first being carried out before the testing and the second at the end, so that a comparison could be made between them. 
136 students responded on the form. And of these, 72% said that they didn't use any method to prevent STIs. And 91% said that they didn't feel comfortable performing tests in Barretos. On the first day, 112 people undertook voluntary testing, including students and employees. And the test was for HIV, syphilis, hepatitis, B and C. And due to the great participation, a second test was carried out in which 80% participated. And since then, this test have been carried out every six months with the support from the university and the health department of the state of Sao Paulo. So you can pass, please. And these are the pictures of the testing day. And I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Gage, and I'm from the National Australian Pharmacy Students Association, which is also known as NAPSA. For our HIV AIDS awareness campaign in 2021, we ran a week long social media campaign. It was in recognition of World AIDS Day 2021. Our target audience was Australian pharmacy students from first to fourth year. Uh, and our aims were to raise awareness, explain the diagnosis, uh, describe treatment options, and explore the pharmacist's role in HIV AIDS prevention. Next slide, please. The first day of the campaign covered uh, what HIV HIV and AIDS is. It explored the etiology of HIV, the pathophysiology of AIDS, and common routes of HIV transmission. For each day, we had uh, different infographics to help convey the message. Next slide, please. The second day covered complications and diagnosis. It highlighted opportunic, opportunistic infections and an explanation of when AIDS is diagnosed. Next slide. The third day covered testing. The three main tests used in Australia are antigen antibody tests, nucleic acid tests, and antibody tests. HIV testing is readily available in Australia uh, with self-testing kits available through community-based pharmacies uh, across the country. Next slide, please. The fourth day covered uh, statistics on HIV and AIDS in Australia. It, uh, covered the prevalence of HIV infection, rates of HIV among at-risk groups, such as the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples within Australia. It also covered the impact of COVID-19 on testing. Now from 2016, we've had a decrease in uh, HIV notifications and that only worsened during COVID. In Australia, there's only about 29,000 people with um, HIV, which is quite low um, on an international level. Next slide, please. The fifth day covered treatment. Now, treatment is the pharmacist's specialty. However, we wanted to aim our content at first years, so everyone could understand the information we were trying to convey. We covered antiretrovirals and pre-exposure prophylaxis. Next slide, please. Here's a few infographics we used. The one on the left covered uh, antiretrovirals and on the right, a few of the different classes uh, that are used. There's also an infographic about PrEP Next slide, please. Finally, on day six, we covered the pharmacist's role in HIV and AIDS awareness. Uh, medicines management is important for pharmacists uh, and the use of S100 medicines for HIV. S100, S100 medicines are um, highly specialized additional uh, prescribed dispense. Now, as I said, are uh, available in community pharmacies across the country. Um, and we also covered how to use uh, self-test kits. 
Next slide, please. To summarize, the campaign was a week long social media campaign to raise awareness of HIV and AIDS in Australia. It explored the pharmacist's role in prevention and treatment, um, and it was in recognition of World AIDS Day 2021. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. So I'm Dorian from IFSA Iran, and I'm so honored to be here and present our work about HIV and AIDS in Iran. So the reason that uh, we wanted to take action about HIV AIDS was that, as we all mentioned, is a serious condition and it is important to have knowledge about it and uh, learn people and let them know about how to provide themselves and their partners, also reduce the stigma and discrimination associated, associated with HIV and also help individuals living with the virus also improve the access to medical care and the support system. Uh, next slide, please. So as IFSA Iran, we tried our best to uh, improve the knowledge of people about HIV and AIDS. So we conducted an awareness webinar, and then we conducted and published a guideline and that gives information about the HIV and AIDS. Uh, then we have an awareness competition, which I'm going to give the information about it later to you. And next slide, please. So the target audiences of our awareness webinar were pharmacy students, healthcare students, pharmacists, healthcare professionals, and also the society. Uh, next slide. The topics that we tried to mention during the webinar was uh, mostly an overview about HIV infection, then different kinds of testing and diagnosis about HIV, antiretroviral therapies, and also references that we can check regarding the treatments and drugs like up-to-date drugs, Lexicom, and other uh, applications that we have. Uh, also, uh, we wanted to mention about HIV vaccine and why it is difficult to uh, produce a vaccine about the HIV. And uh, one of the things that we also mentioned was four important terms that it is related to HIV and AIDS, which is treatment as prevention, prevention of mother-to-child transmission, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and post-exposure prophylaxis. Next slide, please. So now was uh, when that we start our competition. At first, uh, we gave a guideline about the HIV and AIDS, and there were uh, many references mentioned in the file that uh, different people from around the world can join us and uh, take part in the competition. Afterward, after a week, uh, we take the people into the groups, uh, groups of five to six people. And they had to fill the puzzle that you can see on the right side of the screen, uh, which had questions regarding HIV and AIDS. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, regarding the competition, we uh, got uh, 263 uh, participants from different parts of the world, as you can see from Iran, Nigeria, Oman, Dubai, Egypt, Indonesia, Palestine, and Philippines. Next slide, please. Um, we just asked them about the results of the competition and how they feel about the competition. They mostly mentioned that uh, with the guideline that was published, they can uh, increase their knowledge about HIV and AIDS. And also, as we all know, uh, joining gamification with knowledge and uh, teaching is uh, something that now and nowadays, and especially after COVID-19, is very popular. And they enjoyed uh, doing these kinds of things into the groups and uh, just having a brainstorm with their colleagues and other students. Next slide, please. Also, uh, other thing that we do was uh, publishing stories on our social media to increase the awareness of people about HIV and AIDS. Uh, as you can see, we had uh, posters on social media about AIDS itself, about AIDS and the relation between AIDS and COVID-19, and also AIDS and cancer. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you all. Those are all presentations, so I pass on to Jide. So 
Um, thank you very much for the thank you very much for the updates from different MOs. I must commend all, all of you your your impact. I'm sure your impact must have been felt across everywhere you did the campaign. So now we'll hand the mic over to the audience for any questions and comments on the presentations. There is one comment also in the question bar. Um, I don't know if you can see it, okay, but it's to, to Swimsa. So this person asks, them, what, usually when research studies are done, students are only involved in training surveys. Is there a plan to involve medical students who are interested in conducting research studies? <laughs> Oh, actually, I think that's the question for me and Audrey, uh, because that was shared earlier. So maybe we can answer that one later, and and we can mm, take the question from Luis, which is from for Swimsa. Okay. Question from Swimsa says, "How's the evaluation going to excel?" I I don't quite understand this question. Can you take a look at this, Claudia? Um, no, I think that was the question in regards to Swim's activity on the usage of Excel sheet, sheets. Uh, so if Anais, you want to answer, how is the evaluation with the Excel going? Yeah, sure. So um, what we do is that we have like all the childs uh, separated by their age groups. And there is a mark every time they come to the activity. Uh, so we know about the attendance, then about the adherence to treatment. Um, the nurses count the pills every time they come each month in order to know if they, they've taken them or not. So it's also written in the Excel sheets. Uh, we write down their CD4 counts every time they, that they check it. Uh, we also monitor uh, height and weight in order to know if uh, their um, um, growing scale is in the norm or if it's impacted by HIV. So we have control over uh, the health status of the kid and the way that he's adherent or not to his treatment. So basically, this is it. I don't know if you have any other question. I, I don't think there's any other, there's no other question. There is a hand raised from Anton's as well. Can I? Um, thanks, thanks a lot for so interesting country presentations. I have actually two questions. One is like a small one, a practical, and the other one actually could lead to a little bit of the discussion if, if we have time. So the first one, uh, when you uh, implement the, 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 the projects in the countries or, or the international projects, uh, have you had any experience with engaging with uh, local uh, UNAIDs uh, or WHO country offices? So what's the collaborations and, and, and whether we can do something to improve it uh, from our side. And the second is like in general, what are the biggest challenges um, in your work? Is it, um, I don't know, lack of time or lack of expertise or lack of, um, maybe it's sometimes it could be resistance or, or barriers or some, some projects you want to implement, but, I mean, for some reasons, it's not possible. So if we have time, I would like to um, to, to hear any of the feedback on, on those two things. Over. All right. I don't know if any of the uh, presenters wants to start with the answers. Yeah, Anais. 
So for the collaborations, um, um, we don't have any, but I've been in contact with uh, Alicia, who gave me some emails in order to uh, contact people there, because it's true that um, we're having international relationships and it's sometimes really difficult to reach people in charge. And this is one of the challenges that we are facing. For example, uh, with the book that we've written, we wanted to know if it was possible to maybe give it in schools in order to reduce discrimination, uh, in, like for the kids in their daily lives. And um, no one never answered us. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's a bit of a barrier. And I think that for the rest, um, one of the limiting factor is money because fundraising has its limits and we want to improve their life as much as possible. And sometimes it's very complicated when uh, in August we go in Tanzania and we brainstorm with the local team and we arrive at the end of the meeting with, uh, I don't know, 50 ideas and with the budget that we have only 10 are possible to make. So yeah, money is a limiting factor for us. <laughs> All right, maybe there is another um, activity that wants to respond to challenges and and working with the national offices. Oh, I see Dorian. So thank you for your question. Actually, regarding uh, having connection with WHO or other international organizations. Unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity, but we would love to. And uh, for the webinars and this kind of thing and the problems that you mentioned, uh, there are two types of problem that you mentioned, both uh, time limits and also experts, because as we are all students here, it's difficult to manage uh, programs as everyone can contribute and we can have maximized the participations and also um, with our programs we try our best to use the experts which are nationally but I believe that international uh, experts and international experiences can help us more to gain more knowledge and information from them. Thank you. I don't think there's any other question. So, there Alicia is, asked yeah. something to say. I may just come in quickly just to um, add um, to that response. I was also curious um, about um, the healthcare students' engagement um, and, uh, you know, with country offices. Uh, 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 you know, from from UNAIDS and uh, speaking with uh, the, the colleague that leads on the coordination of the uh, global partnership, um, she mentioned that um, IFMSA, for example, was quite active in some uh, of the countries that are priority countries for the Global Prevention Coalition. So um, I would say that uh, it, this collaboration exists but it's not uh, the rule, like we, sh we should be proactive in trying to strengthen the collaboration at the different levels, at the um, country level, regional level and, and global level. So we have some ideas on, on how to um, do this and how to promote this, uh, these alliances at the country level. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, definitely uh, would need um, support if it comes from WHO, it would be also um, be great. In my uh, personal experience, experience um, from the country office in Panama, uh, IFMSA, for example, was quite active um, and it was invited at all the you know, consultations and, and they were part of some of the um, key um, programmatic discussions uh, at the country level. Um, and they also made significant contributions to some of the activities within the uh, national strategic plans and so on. 
but that leadership depend depended on the you know who was taking the lead at, at that time and uh, uh, actually the the level of engagement varied depending on you know who, who was leading the, the the federation at the country level so those those are perhaps some insights uh, from my side uh, but definitely i think we should um, try to make an effort to um you know leverage uh, alliances uh, especially at the country level thank you thank you very much alicia for that Uh, you're muted, sorry. The question that was directed earlier to Audrey and Claudia during their declaration of commitment, during the declaration of commitment, so it's a, usually when research studies are done, students are only involved in filling surveys. Do you have a plan to involve medical students who are interested in conducting the research studies? I'm gonna go first, Audrey. <laughs> I guess in this case, um, the question is directly probably more to you instead of me, but uh, I can say that for my side, like for IPS staff, um, to involve people for like research, actually we have like a portfolio that's called pharmacy education. So in this portfolio, they also do a lot of different research. So for example, this year, we actually have like a research mentorship program. So in this case, other than just telling them, oh, you should do research, we also have this, um, program for people who want to do research and then to have someone guide them along the way. So I think that that can definitely be a lot of um, collaboration between the public health portfolio and the pharmacy education portfolio and see how we can create this topic and then say that, oh, maybe we should have more mentors or like we create this HIV research type of stuff to um, involve them in the whole process. So like start from like brainstorming to like um, thinking about what type of um, data they need and how they're going to collect it up until writing the manuscript and to where they should like submit the manuscript to. Thank you so much. So in the case of IFMSA, we have a separate standing committee that is on research exchange. So aside of organizing uh, the global student mobility uh, to do like research, uh, monthly research exchange, in different countries, they also advocate for research education within medical curriculum. And uh, this year, we're also trying to bring a little bit of research skills into my standing committee, which bases on SRHR. Uh, so actually, this Sunday, we will be having a webinar with, with WHO and UNESCO and a speaker from John Hopkins and ARU um, on how to do quality research on SRHR, also navigating the complexities of like, different social factors and so on. Um, and that is the, the starting point in which we want to develop more workshops on um, SRHR and research specifically. And that was actually one of our goals by 2026 to establish a full uh, workshop on that. And aside from that, we also, during our general assembly, have research fair. Uh, so before that, um, so for the research fair, we also want to make a competition um, before before that. And, and that will be like the research specifically on HIV. And we will also have informatory campaign on research on HIV itself specifically. And that is planned for the next year. So that is our plan for that point. And I think that's all from us. <laughs> and I don't see also other questions, I guess. Thank you very much, Audrey and Claudia, for the answers. So in the absence of any question, we'll move on to the closing remarks from Alicia and Antos. Antos. I can, yeah, I can start maybe. So um, I would really, really would like to thank uh, IFMSA and and the the IPSF as well for for inviting us and also for for this initiative. I think it's very important, as I mentioned, uh, it's very timely because now, um, I mean, it's it's. I think that's the right time to to reinforce the commitment of, of, the, of the medical students and also of the pharmaceutical students. So, um, because that, that 
now we have all the tools and now and now really we're now in the final stages towards the ending aids um i think also we need to realize that there could be many uh opportunities that we can explore further because i don't know if you know but i mean you know of course but the ifmsa is also in the official relationship with who and I think this could be another entry point when we try to um, look for collaboration opportunities on the country level. And it could be probably could be better coordinated between the country level and the uh, global level, both within WHO, but also maybe in IFMSA, because maybe not all the national uh, members of the IFMSA are um, well aware of, of what, what that means and what we can do. But um, I think that's really great that we could meet here in this meeting and and um, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we can we can also build on on this uh, resolution. We can promote it. We can also um, maybe we can also do some um, um, how you call it um, some uh, sensitization uh, uh, also with the our colleagues in the regions and in in, in, the, in the in the country office so maybe we can prepare some kind of a uh not maybe not the press release or but kind of a information now that we can distribute also within who so everybody is aware of of, of your existence <laughs> and all the all the activities so i think it's really it's a i, I see a lot of opportunities here so thanks and let's let's work together over. Yeah, from my side, I also see uh, lots of opportunities. And, and actually, for me, it has been a, a real pleasure to work this, uh, you know, past three years uh, with, um, with IFMSA uh, more closely at the global level. Um, uh, you know, we have identified some uh, concrete actions, and uh, we have, you know, recently uh, been collaborating more, more closely together. Um, I think the declaration, as Anton mentioned, the declaration of commitment is a, is a timely um, framework for action. Uh, and, and, you know, the idea is to kind of, you know, reinvigorate uh, the HIV response within the healthcare students uh, movement. Um, I think it's important um, not only, you know, for the HIV response, for the, but for pandemic uh, preparedness and responses in general. There's, there's a lot um, you can learn um, uh, on how to respond to pandemics uh, through the, you know, 40 years of lessons learned from the HIV response. Um, so throughout the event, we have really, you know, witness and, and we have um, learn more about the significant uh, contributions um, from the from both IFMSA and I, I, IPFS um, to the to the HIV response, but beyond that, you know, to the healthcare system, how to improve um, and many aspects related to stigma and discrimination. Um, that is, is so important to break down um, the inequalities and, and address some of the structural barriers that are really um, hindering access um, to healthcare, um, you know, for many, many different uh, um, vulnerable and marginalized communities. Um, so I also recently had the chance to, I was invited to, to attend the IFMSA General Assembly which for me was a really great experience. Um, and I had the, the opportunity to witness the high quality of training that they provide to medical students and uh, you know, how, um, uh, how they really make a, a, a different, uh, a different uh, within uh, the, 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 the healthcare uh, sector. It's, that was very, very, you know, a unique opportunity for me and a really good experience. Um, finally, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, uh, UNH remain committed um, to you know supporting, collaborating with IFMSA, and we want to expand, expand our uh, our collaboration with both IFMSA and IPFS. Um, we highly 
appreciate your contributions to the HIV youth movement. Um, and we are um, here just, you know, to support and, and um, um, be an entry point uh, yeah, from our side. From, from our side. Um, and finally, I, I want to say a special thanks to Claudia, um, who is now uh, handing over her role uh, to another uh, uh, colleague. Um, but uh, just to let you know, it has been a pleasure uh, working with you and collaborating with you. You have been a driving force uh, for this uh, declaration. So yeah, applause for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And well, I also want to thank Audrey for the constant communication and supporting us in this role. I think it's a great, um, a great, um, well, a, another edition of this declaration, which we are expanding the role in um, actually implementing the comprehensive healthcare, in which we include uh, pharmacists as well. So yeah, that's been really great uh, to work with you and also with you, Alicia, and you, Antons, and with all of you, thank you for, for the presentations and amazing actions on the national level. <laughs> Definitely, I want to say thank you so much, um, Claudia, for like inviting us to um, this collaboration. I do think it is a very important topic that we all need to work together. So I'm excited to see how well, we can collaborate more in the future and to see like how we can have more even more movements and I know that there are a lot talking about how we can even putting more like global mindset back to like the local and it is very inspiring today to see like all of the works that all the national member organizations have been doing and I'm sure there are a lot more out there and then I'm just continuing to support just more people where they are within the youth sectors or like they're outside of youth sectors so we can all work together. Okay, thank you very much for those eight remarks from, Aud from Audrey, Claudia, Antons, and Alicia. On that note, we have come to the end of the declaration and today's events in general. So everyone please have a nice rest of the day and until next time. Goodbye. Thank you all. Hope thank you, you enjoyed. Bye.